I'm Forrest Tanaka, and I wanted to show my digital photography workflow. Now, not so much things like selection and editing, because a lot of people cover that way better than I could. I'm, most, I'm going to cover things like importing and backup and storage. And this is, I do this on my Macintosh. So some of this is going to be pretty Mac based, but hopefully everyone can maybe get some ideas from this. So as far as what I use, I use a laptop. This is a MacBook Pro, uh, getting a little old from around 2008, uh, with four gigabytes of memory. And that is not enough really, but it's sufficing for now until I can do an upgrade. Now, digital photography is all about storage and I've got plenty of that. And it's all hidden behind my laptop here. So these two, one terabyte drives connected over FireWire 800, uh, are to store my photos. This one stores my older photos uh, before 2010. And this one is the newer one. It stores everything from 200, 2010 on. Uh, let's see, this ugly drive here is my time machine drive. It's just a standard time machine drive that only backs up my internal drive, which does not include any of my photos. I also have this drive. Actually, these two drives here are not connected to my Macintosh. They're connected to my Airport Express. And so effectively, these are network attached, network attached storage, or NAS both of these. Uh, this one stores my iTunes and iPhoto libraries, not really involved in my regular photo editing, but it let me free up a lot of space on my main hard drive. This one is my 1.5 terabyte photo backup drive. This backs up both of these drives that store my photos. Now, 1.5 does not add up as far as two one terabyte drives. Right now, I simply don't have enough photos on here to have that be a problem. Someday it will be, and so I'll probably have to upgrade or add to this hard drive. This hard drive is another one terabyte drive. It's just basically a scratch storage. I use Lightroom for photo editing. Lightroom needs a um, preview cache. I don't remember what they called it. So that's on here. My Photoshop work drive is or Photoshop working files are stored on here, and any other odds and ends I need all get stored on here. So those are my storage. And so let's take a look. I've got some photos of my cat and uh, my daughter that I wanted to import. These are just basically snapshots for demonstration. Uh, and I know that I shot with this flashcard because I stored it I, with this uh, plastic case that I have a hard time opening, I've actually marked it with an X. And if I store the flashcard this way with the back to the X, then I know this is a card that's empty that I can start shooting with. If I store it with the face of the card to the X, that tells me I've already shot with this card. So I have to be really careful to maintain the standard so that I don't get confused. So far it's worked really well. So I use this USB 2 flash card reader. And it's a little bit inconvenient here. Plug it into my computer. And then I set up Lightroom to import. And so let's switch to my Lightroom screen. So I don't have it set up to auto import, just because I found that kind of a pain. So let's import manually. Wait for that import dialog to show up. And there's my CF card. Here's a lot of photos all set to import. Now, their Lightroom has these different options. I used to, I, for about a year, I used DNG. It had some benefits, but it slowed down the import process so much that I just didn't want to do that anymore. So now I just do copy the Canon RAW files. 
oh yes, I shoot with Canon. So these are C .CR2 files. Uh, there's many things you can do and many methods as far as keywording. Uh, I won't cover that here. Uh, I'll turn off or I'll make this minimal previews just to make the importing quicker. And let's see, and I'll just import into this drive. Now this is one of those two one terabyte drives. The other one is here. This, these are for my older fo photos. These are for my newer ones. And I keep this them in a negatives folder. Now if I was importing a specific event, I'll normally categorize them into one of these folders and usually a subfolder within one of these. But since these are just snapshots, I'll just put them into my top level photo directory. So I don't want to import all of these for speed, so I'll uncheck all and I'll just pick a couple. Oh, I guess this one and this one and oh, maybe this one. Okay, we'll just import three of these photos. I'll click import. So here they're coming in as .cr2 files, like I said, and these typically don't take very long. Now these photos are from a Canon 5D Mark II, so these are 21 megapixel files. And it's just about ready here, and now it's all done. So my next step is not to start editing them. My next step is to start backing them up. And that's where I use a program called Chronosync. I've been using this for years, really like it. it. Has a lot of good capabilities. Now, my photo backup drive, which I misnamed Backsup, which I've never fixed, I wish I did, is actually stored on one of the network attached storage, which is under this uh, drive. So actually, under this, uh, actually, this particular icon represents the Airport Express, and there's two drives under this. Now, one of those drives is mounted to show, uh, to feed my uh, iTunes library, but the other one is my photo backup drive, which is not. And you can see these are the source drives, which is the, um, uh, for the directory of photos I just imported, and this is for the backup drive. Notice it says cannot locate target because the backup drive is not mounted. But I have an option checked to say attempt to mount server only when synchronizing. And so it'll automatically mount that drive, back it up, and then automatically unmount it. A couple other things to notice is it says synchronize deletions. So if I delete a fo folder or photo off of my main photo drive, it also gets deleted in my backup the next time I do a backup. Sound, seems kind of dangerous, but I have it set up so that when I delete a file, it doesn't delete it on the backup. It just moves it to a backup, to an archive folder on my backup drive. And then I have a rule. Oh, I forget where it is. Maybe it's under here. Oh no, it's under options, I think. So let me grab that one. That says anything in the archive that's been there for more than 90 days gets permanently deleted. So that way I have 90 days after deleting a photo from my main library until it gets deleted from my backup. That's worked really well because typically after 90 days, I'm not that interested anymore. And it saves space on my backup drive. And so I manually do a backup. So this will look, well, first it will mount the uh, backup drive, which takes a few seconds here. And also this particular document, oh, there it mounted. This particular document, I have it automatically run every night at two in the morning. So I never lose more than 24 hours worth of photos and usually considerably less. So now it's connecting to that backup drive. Uh, this is over, this is a fairly recent airport extreme. So it supports 802.11n. 
So now you see it backing up the three new files. Now yeah, it took quite a bit of time uh, because there were some other files I hadn't backed up before today. Uh, so it was busy copying those over. And now it's finishing up. Good. So now those three new files are backed up. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I can quit the backup program. Let's switch back into Lightroom. And so now I ha already have, before I even start editing, two copies of the raw file. One stored on the FireWire 800 drive and one stored on the NAS. And so that's when I begin editing. Now, I used to use Aperture uh, for about a year because it came out before Lightroom did. But I just found the Aperture model of editing photos, and I just couldn't get my brain around it. Um, but I actually do like Aperture's uh, user interface quite a bit better. I really don't like these uh, modes up here that Lightroom insists on. But I do like the way Lightroom edits. And so at this stage, is where I rather leave off because now you've seen how I handle photos uh, as far as importing and backing up. And so hopefully that was helpful and I'll see you next time.